So bowls are my favorite thing to make. I think that they're the hardest thing to make and the easiest. It's really easy to make something that is a bowl shaped object, but not actually a bowl. So I'm going to show you two different ways to make bowls. We'll make bowls from a single ball of clay and then we'll make bowls off the hump, which is making many small bowls off of a larger piece of clay. So first, we're going to get our clay centered, just like we would any other time. The difference between bowls and anything else we're making though is we're not making a cylinder because we need to make it so it's round on the inside. So I've centered my clay, now I'm going to open it up. Now so far this semester we've only been making cylindrical objects. In this case here, normally we would set the diameter of our piece and flatten our bottom. For bowls, we're not doing that. We are setting the thickness of our base first, but we're not going to be flattening it. So. We'll open it and then we're going to take our needle tool and we're going to check the thickness of the floor. So we're going to stick the needle tool through the base. We're going to then rest our finger up against it and that will tell us how thick that is. That's a little bit thick. It's always good to err on the side a little bit too thick initially and then set it down to the depth that you want. What we're doing now is we're setting the height that our foot will be trimmed on our bowl later on because bowls are two steps. They are, you throw them, and then you let them get leather hard, and then you trim them. So, I'm going to make it a little bit deeper. I'll get my water out of the inside, and double check this one more time. That's good. It's about half an inch. And I'm going to fix that little hole I made. It's like it didn't happen. Now, for pulling, depending on the angle at which you want your bowl, you're going to lean your head at the angle you want. If you want it to be a little bit taller, you'll sit up above it. If you want it to be a shallow bowl, then you'll lean down a little bit more. I think it's easier to pull a little bit higher and then set the width with your metal rib later. So I'm gonna pull up and out. Notice I started with my left hand resting on the inside all the way at the bottom. And then my right hand on the outside, I'm pushing hard all the way at the, dot, at the base of the piece. I'm raising the clay out and up. I haven't really looked at the outside yet. I'm not worried about the outside. The outside will happen when I trim my piece. Things that you don't want to do. Don't pull your base too thin. I'm going to show you what not to do here. If you have an indentation like this, I call this the ring of shame. So don't leave that there. That means you pulled your base too thin and it's almost for sure gonna crack when it dries. So you're gonna go over that ring of shame with your smooth metal rib. You're gonna start with the rib on the inside, your left hand on the outside, and you're gonna press down right on that ring of shame and get rid of it. Your mission here is if you were to have a marble and you were to drop that on the inside of your bowl, it should roll back and forth without any interruptions. So take your time making your inside nice. This is where it's important that you have left it thick enough at the base because if you made it too thin when you rib that it's going to be too thin when you trim it. Okay, It's almost good. I'm going to run my fingers over there one more time just to see how thin the walls are. That's good. Okay. Um, the outside, I'll look at it now that I've gotten it up there, looks decent. If I wanted to get rid of any throw lines, my order of operations here is use my wooden rib to compress that surface. On the outside, and then I'm going to go over the inside one more time just to make sure it's nice and smooth. Make sure that the leading edge of your rib doesn't go over this imaginary line in the center because when it does that, it will dig in to the opposite side of your bowl. Now, if you're thinking about small bowls like this, the, if, you, if you were to maybe drink the last bit of milk out of a bowl of cereal or whatever, you may want to treat your bowl like you would 
a mug and thin that edge. Um, I'm also a realist. I'm gonna use this and throw it in my dishwasher. So I'm not gonna make my rim too thin. Um, that's a nice middle of the road thickness. If I was gonna make a vegetable bowl or something larger, I would fatten that up a bit. But for small bowls like this, uh, this is a fine width rim. Give yourself an undercut. There should be no water on the inside because you've been ribbing that inside. If you did leave water in the inside, make sure you get that out at this point. And there you go. You're gonna take your wire, pass your wire under the bottom, dry your hands off. Now this is, the wider and shallower you go with your bowl, the more likely it is to turn to a taco when you lift it up. So one, two, three, twist and lift. And if it starts to turn into a taco, just go with it like that. It's warping a little bit and then place it and we're good to go. Let this get leather hard. Um, and then we're going to trim, trim the base of this for trimming. We want it to be a little beyond leather hard. So the rim may have started to change color and approach bone dry, but you want it to at least be leather hard because if you try to trim it too early, you're going to trim through the bottom of your piece. We're going to throw a bowl off the hump now. So. so throwing off the hump is uh, if you want to make many pieces off of one larger piece. So take a large chunk of clay and just slam it on down there. We're not worried about getting this whole thing centered. If you're having trouble centering more than three pounds, which some of you may, uh, don't get intimidated by this. You don't have to center this whole thing. We just got to center the top portion. Okay. So notice that the base of this is not even close to center. Let's make it like way off center just to illustrate it, that you don't need to be intimidated by this. The top of this can be centered and the base of it can just be wonky. Don't even worry about that. Um, of course, that's I don't want to generally do that, but just to illustrate a point. Okay, so now we're gonna, I'm gonna go a little quicker on this because um, you already saw how to make a bowl. I'm gonna define the base of my piece right there with my fingernail or wooden rib, something that says this is the bottom of your piece. If we're talking about problems that occur with throwing off the hump is you don't have uh, a bottom on your piece and you go through the ba base of it. So give yourself a visual line that says, this is the bottom of my piece. Then when you open it, you're gonna use your thumbs, press down, one, two, three, go. And you wanna look at the base where the inside of your piece has been opened and where you've drawn your line and make sure you don't go beyond that because you will cut through the bottom of your piece later. And then you just make a bowl like you would before. This is how I normally throw bowls, is off the hump. I don't usually do one at a time like I just did. I think this is faster. Okay, so that was three pulls. However many you need to do to get it done. Don't worry about counting your pulls. Okay, I'm gonna take my metal rib inside nice and tidy love it um, clean that rim up as always now this is the next step is where most people don't like and that is cutting it off this is why you gotta make sure you have a nice line drawn on the base of your piece so you have a target so you're gonna take your wire and you're gonna hold it parallel to the wheel head. Don't let it get angled like this, okay? Um, you're gonna left hand stationary, right hand is gonna pull like this, and I'm gonna pull it right across where my line is, and I'm gonna one, two, three, go. If you dilly-dally, it will be sloped. You don't want that. Twist and lift. Place it, you're good to go. Then take your clay, make another bowl. 
and you just keep making bowls until you're out of clay. Okay, keep that in mind. It's a good skill to learn how to throw off the hump because we're gonna need to do that when we do our teapots later on in the semester for our spouts. Anyway, this is how I like making bowls. When we get into our Potter's Olympics later in the semester, it is a race, okay? So practice making your bowls as fast as you can. And this is one of the things where quantity will equal quality as you go. All right, so that's throwing bowls off the hump and in a couple hours we'll be trimming them. 